Hey, welcome back to Cheating Wife, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to the channel for cheating stories like this. Wife is having an emotional affair, at least. The title speaks for itself. I discovered several text messages a few days ago while spying. I snooped after approximately three weeks of emotional withdrawal, lack of physical touch, and her just being different. I discovered she missed work around two weeks ago and lied repeatedly about having arrangements with him this weekend. There were additional stuff in there like her asking whether he was upset about her buddy being around now and how glad she is to see him again. She grew combative when questioned, although she insists she has never cheated on me, even in front of friends and family. I requested to read her texts, but she had them hidden. I ended up couch surfing after the argument, and she says, if we don't have trust, what do we have? She has never done anything like this before. She stated she hasn't been pleased with us for nearly three years, since our child was born. I'm at a loss for what to do, and I really want to give her the benefit of the doubt and believe it was all in her head. We've had our disagreements, and she's asked for some distance so she can work things out with us. She's been stating she wants space since October of last year. If she's looking to this person for something we don't have, I understand and can get beyond it if she's willing to put in the effort. But I'm not sure I can if it became physical with them. I'm sick to my stomach about all of this. We also have a couple's therapy appointment scheduled for this Friday, but they won't tell me whether or not we're truly separated. Update, she hired a lawyer, and two days after I arrived, she had her mother send me a letter terminating the marriage. After 10 years together, she couldn't do it face to face. To be honest, I'm upset, but I also feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. She has requested me to spend three days a week at home with our kid, and she has agreed to take over the rest of the days on a temporary basis until I locate a place with friends or a basement apartment. I have a four-year-old son. She's uprooting his whole life for some jerk, and I'm going to start putting my money in a different bank account. It's stunning to see how cold and selfish the individuals I believed were my family have become. Thank you to everyone who helped me see through the fog to realize what human trash my wife had turned into. I'm quite confident I've got the first legal appointment. Story 2. 19 years gone in one conversation. My, 19-year-old, wife, 46 male, informed me about a blind date set up by a friend. She went out with her buddy T for a ladies' night out. T reportedly her up with a man she had slept with a few weeks before. T was up with someone else and had set up my wife with the previous encounter. My wife left about 7 p.m. and returned at 3 a.m. that night. The revelation came entirely unexpectedly, she apologized, wants to work on our marriage, waterworks, and begged pardon. Because T had slept with him, she claimed that nothing transpired between her and the man. She knew agreeing to meet with him was bad, and traveling to meet with him was even worse. I don't think she's telling the truth when she says nothing occurred. She also said that the man worked at a sawmill and you earn more money, which is why I'm the better choice. Essentially, she was admitting to deliberately attempting to replace me. This article would be a lot different if she could find someone with a higher earning job. My wife and T had a catastrophic collapse of their relationship not long after this girl's night out and before the disclosure. According to my wife, they went from closest friends to T as a liar and a manipulative jealous person. I believe the confession, or partial confession, was made to prevent T from informing me about her affair with the man. Gaslighting me on the reality of what occurred by just giving me a portion of the story. Only enough to make things appear horrible, but not the whole heinous reality of what occurred. To be honest, I didn't need to know all that had transpired. Her narrative didn't make sense. There were just too many gaps in the plot. Little coincidences that happened around that time brought everything into sharp focus. I lost all feelings for her when she informed me about it. I became numb and didn't even become upset. I'm finished. At the moment, I'm just working on my departure plan. Getting your finances in order, finding a place to live, and so forth. It's awful that she's prepared to toss away 19 years of marriage with no respect for anything, even our two children. Update, please accept my apologies in advance for the length of this update. Since my initial post, a lot has occurred. She is in full-fledged panic mode. She was just diagnosed with an autoimmune condition in which her white blood cells assault her lungs. Asthma episodes are caused as a result of this, which are untreatable by standard medicines. The only medication available to treat the disease has a cost of $13,000 after her Medicaid. There's no way she'd be able to afford it if I didn't have incredibly fantastic health insurance via my job. She is doing all she can to reconcile even arranging for couples therapy. We completed two and a half sessions. Explains why she spoke the truth in part and wants to correct things. Counseling went just how I expected. 
Every session focused on everything I'd done wrong. Ever. This includes me working 50 hours a week to make ends meet since she is on partial disability and cannot work. By any stretch of the imagination, I'm not suggesting I'm flawless. Everything, including our two children, was raised up. Except that I was told that mentioning her date night was forbidden. About halfway through the third session, the counselor looked her in the eyes and said, if you have such a powerful radar to detect what everyone else is doing wrong, direct that radar at yourself and tell me what you are doing wrong. The proverbial erupted. My SDBXW began shouting at the counselor, demanding to know why she was assaulting her when we were there to repair me. My STBXW stormed out weeping after a few minutes of back and forth. My STBXW has a profound animosity for me, according to the counselor, and I don't believe this marriage can be repaired. Yep, and nay, I basically said. I told the counselor that I appreciated her time and that we would not be returning. She offered me one-on-one -on -one therapy. I told her that I will most likely do so in the future and then continued to tell her about the taboo issue. Needless to say, that didn't surprise her and just served to reinforce her suspicions. Needless to say, the whole ride back to the home was spent discussing what a charlatan and the therapist was. When I'm at home, I'm virtually on autopilot. I call it the house since it is no longer a home. I've taken over the extra bedroom. As far as I'm concerned, I'm married, but I don't have a wife. She would still be looking if she didn't require adequate medical insurance. I don't need to find tea to acquire the whole tale. I reside in a little town of around 900 people. Every day, I travel to work in a larger city. Guess who ran into my SDBXW on Monday of this week while visiting the community's lone grocery store? It's none other than the gentleman from the blind date. Small towns, correct? It was unavoidable. When he approached her, I was at the end of the aisle. He's a little man. Perhaps 5 feet 9 inches and 150 pounds. She had her back to me and had no idea where I was. Right in front of me, he asked her out again. She did, however, refuse. That's when I came in. I inquired whether he was the man she had a date with approximately two months ago. He inquired as to what it meant to me. I pushed him against the shelves and informed him I'd been her spouse for 19 years. I was afraid he was going to pee on himself. I'm 6 foot 2 and 250 pounds, and I'm quite muscular. She attempted to persuade me to back down. I yelled at her to stop talking and to pay attention. She burst into tears right away. He informed me he had been told she was unmarried and begged me not to murder him. I inquired as to whether they had effed. He gulped hard and answered yes, and she sobbed even more. I promised him I'd never see him again. He apologized profusely and stormed out of the business. Her AP exposed her by being at the wrong place at the wrong time. I would have eventually gone into tea to obtain the tale if it hadn't been him. Needless to say, I'm mostly on autopilot. It's as though all feeling has vanished. I have to put on a happy front while I'm with my kids. I'm not sure whether it's an emotional self-defense strategy to prevent things from coming apart worse. I'm aware that I should be upset about this. It's going to strike hard one day. I no longer believe what I know to be true. Do my children really adore me? Or do they like the gifts I offer them? Do my parents agree? Do they adore the fact that I had outstanding scores in school? Have you ever gotten into trouble? Have you always had well-paying jobs? The only thing I know for sure is that I can't continue in this charade of a marriage. I wake up, go to work, and seldom ever eat or sleep. Strangers on the internet are the only ones I've told about this. I have no one to discuss this with. I move from day to day trying to be normal. Perhaps my SDBXW was correct. The therapist does have to help me.